we have had some incidents such as some uh, car accidents, such we just had one recently, a uh, very horrific car accident. And uh, I, I am the commanding officer of the peer team, so I sought out the officers on the team, talked to a few of them, and had them reach out to the officers who responded to the location. Our team has been trained to look at all different types of issues that are uh, police officers that deal with on a daily basis. Uh, it's n more about uh, the officer himself than uh, just the critical incidents. We're looking, our officers are looking at uh, some family life rumors, anything like that. Uh, any, if the officer is possibly having problem with alcoholism, gambling, uh, problems at home. So uh, our department is very well aware of our peer support team. Command officers, are known to keep an eye out on, on things that could be stressors that are affecting officers with officer performance. We'll, uh, if an officer is uh, coming to work late a lot, if we notice a difference in work activity or anything, a lot of our command officers are very in tune. They'll call the officer in, have a one-on-one, -on -one, and just offer them the opportunity to speak with a peer. Through our peer support training, our officers have learned to look for stressors such as depression or thoughts of suicide with our officers as well. So, Through my years in this profession, I've been on this job for approximately 22 years now, and there are many critical incidents that we respond to. One that sticks out in my head the most occurred in 2012. I had just become a father. My son was born, uh, was a premature baby, and he lived in the NICU for approximately a month. During that month, I was going every day, hours, you know, we were there. And while we were there, in the bassinet next to him was uh, a baby with a very unique name. Well, that family was in there every day right along with us. Well, uh, my son eventually was able to come out of the NICU and come home. And it was approximately when he was maybe four months old, uh, we responded to a call. I was sitting in roll call with my partner and they said that there was a baby not breathing. We responded uh, the quickest way we got there. And when we ran into the house, there was an officer attempting to uh, do CPR and I was giving rescue breaths to the baby when I heard the screaming of the mother saying the name of what was the name of the child that was in the bassinet next to next to my son in the NICU. And I glanced over between breaths and sure enough, that was the baby that was in the bassinet next to my son. Uh, the, uh, we uh, proceeded to continue giving rescue breaths as we were running out the door and handed him off to, handed her off to uh, the fire department uh, personnel that arrived on the scene and we escorted them to the hospital and unfortunately the baby did not make it. Um, and honest, there was not a dry eye in the entire emergency room. Doctors, police, firemen, everyone. Just, you know, thinking about that, it, it, is, it is tough, it, you know, because every time we go down that street, I do think of that, that little baby at that house. In fact, it affected me to the point where I was, um, I've seen the blood, I've seen the guts out there, but this one is the one that got me. Uh, I still carry the, the prayer card in my uh, pocket because I actually went to the funeral as well. The reason why it hit so hard was because that child was literally in the bassinet next to my son. That child was, I saw that baby every day. I. Uh, it was so much, I don't ever tell my wife about stuff at work. The stuff I tell her about at work is the stuff that you would laugh at. We, everything that I tell my, my wife or family is about the funny stuff. I never tell them about, I told her about that one and she knew right away who the baby was. I think the reason why child and baby deaths affect officers so much is because so many of us our parents. So many of us are fathers, so many of us are mothers, and we see our own kids in some of these instances. Another incident that occurred, this one was probably 
probably about, had to be about 15 years ago at least, but it was a suicide that I went to. And when I responded, to, I responded there with the sergeant, um, I remember the family screaming that he's in the bedroom, he has a gun, he has a gun. And when we got into the bedroom, he had already, he had already uh, killed himself. And I remember sitting next on the counter, right next to where he was laying. It was on the his bed was right here, and his dresser was right here. I remember walking up, and I had graduated from Central Michigan University, and he had the same Michigan Central Michigan University card. I can remember his name. I can remember the house. I can remember the street. To this day, I don't remember the exact year, but I can tell you exactly just from seeing that going, oh my, oh my God, the guy's got the same ID that I had. We are surrounded in negativity, this profession, uh, whether it be the media or the incidents that we're dealing with. Nine times out of 10, no one is ever happy to see the police when they show up. This job has changed my philosophy in life in the fact that I value every day with my wife and kids and my family more. You need to have another outlet of experiencing different, different things. Go on vacation, get away, get away. Do, do not just completely consume yourself with being a cop all the time. Get, you know, meet, have friends outside of this profession. And I know they, they told us that in the academy, meet people outside the profession, keep your friends outside of the profession. It doesn't happen. We all, everybody I talk to, you scroll through my phone, all the favorites on the phone are guys I work with. You go through my recent calls, all of them are the guys I work with, and the texting, all the guys I work with. The fact is, though, that we all get together, we, do, we go camping together, we do all that kind of stuff together, but we can separate ourselves from the department. We don't, at least the group I hang out with, we tell the funny stories. We don't talk about the calls. We don't talk about, you know, um, you know, so-and-so has a warrant or this or that. We've never been that group. The group that I hang out with is always about, do you believe so-and-so did this? And we start laughing. And that's what this job's all about, is trying to be able to have some sort of laughter after all the death and destruction and everything else that you see. Because it is a lot of gloom and doom, but you got to be able to separate yourself from it. Trust and the Brotherhood of Blue is so valuable and important to these officers out here on the road. At times throughout your career, you're going to think this is all you have are your brothers out on the road. That's all you have. You're going to think that, you know, we see it every day where the media is portraying us as bad or, you know, we're dealing with things on the road that are bad. And sometimes you'll say, you know, your bosses are bad, you know, and the administration or this and that. But your brothers are on the road. Those are the ones looking out for you. So it's extremely, extremely important to officers to be able to trust each other. Uh, and that's why I think a peer support is where is, is one of the greatest ideas to come along. Like I said, when 2017, when I heard this, I was just like, this is awesome because, you know, I, being able to talk to, you know, one of the guys on the team that I have literally stood next to on a perimeter, that I have stood next to over a dead body, that I've stood and fought with someone resisting arrest, that those are the guys that I want to be able to talk to about these things and them being able to keep things, keep things in and have the confidentiality that comes along with it. It's, it will, it helps so much in this profession. It's such an important thing.